always great to have an episode where I am totally the first person to talk about this movie online. And by that, I mean I am so not the first person to talk about this movie online. Look at this, when you type in the Star Wars Holiday Special on IMDb, the Star Wars Holiday Special isn't even the first thing to come up. A bulk of the rest of it is made up with other online personalities just talking about the Star Wars Holiday Special. But there is a new Star Wars movie coming out, and it is the holidays, so... That is pretty perfect timing. What the hell else am I gonna talk about? Star Babe? The fuck? I could be talking about Star Babe! Meanwhile... Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it. I can't escape it, can I? I have to go through with it, don't I? <gasps> All right, here we go. The Star Wars Holiday Special. The rumors were true, people. In 1978, an actual Christmas special was released under the Star Wars name. The Star Wars Holiday Special aired in 1978, making this quite an anniversary for it. Not because a 37th anniversary is anything noteworthy, it's just that this movie sucks 37 dicks! And it's not like they just got some of the supporting actors be in it, no, they got the whole friggin' cast. Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher, James Earl Jones, the worst. And not only that, it has guest stars like Art Carney, Harvey Corman, and B. Arthur. Because like most people, when you think Star Wars, you fucking think B. Arthur. In case you haven't heard, that was really, really bad. It's so bad that David Hosted ranked it as number one on the list of the 100 dumbest events in television history, and Shepard Smith called it the worst two hours of television ever. And he's on a network that once had the half hour news hour. Star Wars Magazine called it number three of the goofiest moments in the Star Wars mythos. Wow, only number three? That's saying something. Then again, it does have a higher Rotten Tomatoes percentage than that Clone Wars movie. This special has never re-aired, and to this day, George Lucas has apparently gone out of his way to make sure that nobody sees it. And George Lucas himself said that if he had time and a sledgehammer, he'd destroy every copy. Now, the most obvious joke is to then compare the badness of this to the badness of the prequel trilogy. But that joke has been made more times and this special has been reviewed. So, instead of that, I guess I'll say, um, hmm. Okay, so he'd rather destroy this, but Radioland Murders is okay? Damn. Now I just feel like I'm being an asshole to Radio Land Murders. So just to recap, this is the guy who said this is okay and this is okay. Which means this is the project that he was personally ashamed of. I'm gonna go over that again. Okay, okay, personally ashamed of. There are not enough toilets in the world to contain the amount of shit spewing fear that I am going through right now. But spirit of Christmas, I feel I owe it to you to give the audience a gift to review this heinous special. Begin. Here's clue number one that the Star Wars Holiday Special is starting out on the wrong foot. Because of the following special program, Wonder Woman and the Incredible Hulk will not be presented this evening. Oh, how about you go fuck yourself, CBS? Hell, the show aired November 17th the week before Thanksgiving. It didn't even wait until the proper Christmas season, which begins the day after Thanksgiving. So we see Han Solo and Chewbacca fighting off the stock footage from the first movie. And shitty TV camera work. As they try to make playful banter. I'll get you back there in time, pal. Trust me. The movie has to do with getting Chewie home to his family so they can celebrate the Wookiee Holiday Life Day. That's it. Life what? Life day. Life day? What the hell is life day? Yes, perhaps I should have rephrased this title a bit. It's not really a Christmas special as much as it is a holiday special. Christmas isn't even mentioned. 
Instead, we get a Wookiee holiday known as Life Day. A holiday probably invented by Jawa advertisers to make more money. And in case you don't know, it takes place a long time ago on a cheap title card far, far away. I, for one, am offended by the use of the word holiday in the title, all part of the ongoing war on Life Day. The special contains plenty of Star Wars actors, plus special guest stars, including Tab Hunter, Jack Daniels, Dot Matrix, a mailbox, The Geek, Rue McClanahan, Rachel Marin, Jefferson Monorail, Mel Brooks, Medea, and Marijuana. Wait, go back. Let me hear some of that again. With Anthony Daniels as C-3PO, R2-D2 as R2-D2. <laughs> because fuck you, Kenny Baker. Brought to you by General Motors, because after this, you'll want to get hit by a car. Meanwhile, in the painting at your dentist's office, a bulk of this takes place on Chewie's home planet, Kashik. Because of course the word cash is in the name! The special pronounces it Kazook, because if the plot is meaningless, then so are letters. Why, who's that cute little hunk of armpit hair? I'm guessing it's Chewbacca's son, but it's sort of hard to tell considering that they never speak English. This is Chewie's family, his wife Mala, father Itchy, and his son Lumpy. I don't understand why George Lucas hates this special. It already sounds like it's in his fucking wheelhouse. Itchy is working on a model TIE fighter, proving that even old man Wookiees have regular old man hobbies. By the way, I know that wasn't a TIE fighter. I just wanted to see who would pause the video to tell me that. But why pause when you gotta keep this action going? Am I about to see my first Wookiee kid getting an ass whooping? I don't need to see that! Fuck off, kid! Thank you. Fuck. It already looks like someone punched them in the eyes. Good of Mala to be wearing that apron. Not like she and the rest of them spend the rest of their time butt-ass naked. Go for it, Lumpy. Eat that bowl of actual lady fingers. The first act notoriously features the Wookiees screaming at each other with no subtitles or Han Solo there to repeat what they're saying. <laughs> oh my god, we're gonna have to listen to this throughout the entire special, aren't we? If you thought Chewbacca's roar got annoying at times, try a fucking choir of it. Well, I do believe that perhaps- yeah, my ears are bleeding. Thank you, Special, my ears are bleeding. Five minutes in, ears bleeding. Thank you. my usual gimmick of adding in fake subtitles, but as I learned from doing that to The Passion of the Christ, adding the fake subtitles rendered that movie really confusing. No one knew how to decipher that film's intricate plot. <laughs> Seriously, it's like watching a Wookiee reality show. Where's the lasers? Where are the starships? Is the hairball equivalent of Norman Rockwell really the only thing we're gonna get? What do you think the script for this looked like? Do you think it actually explained any more about what's going on? Believe it or not, I actually have a copy of the screenplay right here. Let's see what it says. No, Lumpy, don't jump! You'll ruin the fantastic artwork! Oh, good, the special is deliberately trying to kill its actors. He also had to do this same thing in the Breakfast Club holiday special. 
Poor Mala. I feel bad for her. She really misses this publicity photo. They gotta kill some time before Chewie shows up, so here's a thing that happens. Okay, what's this? Alright, you're halfway there, Special. You're in fact doing something, but how about something that actually makes sense? Sorry, the acid hasn't kicked in yet. This is doing nothing for me. Whoa! Who's doing the 69 assault there? All this did was remind the kids in their audience that they could be doing something better, like playing video games. Maybe this'll be like Dumbo and they'll all fall and break their asses. Okay, so the 1978 TV audience is still watching, still watching... <laughs> The channel has been changed. Good, they were wrapping up their little performance piece anyway. <sighs> I have no idea what's going on. It's like watching the Star Wars prequels. Boo. Huh, so this is why no one has heard from Dayton, Ohio since 1978. Oh, and W-H-I-O, Wahio, real original. While it may not be time for the Jefferson Starship cameo, it is time for the Luke Skywalker cameo. Here's Mark Hamill trying out for a role in The Brood. Whoa, when does Skywalker turn into a Ken doll? I mean, look at him, he looks like a store mannequin. Was the 12-year-old tomboy look just in at the time? Where's Chewbacca? <laughs> He's stuck in a trash compactor? Because that's what you all sound like! You know, Luke has better things to do, like taking part in a space rebellion. Come on, Mala, let's see a little smile. Come on. There, <laughs> that's better. Ah! Okay, a Wookiee smiling should be outlawed. And then a bunch of steam goes off and kills him. Goodbye, Luke Skywalker. The Empire wins. Nice fireplace. Can't imagine that being a bad idea in a treehouse. Meanwhile, Imperial Phalus pops by Art Carney's pawn shop to pick up some Star Wars bootlegs. A pocket size aquarium. Wonderful, isn't it? <laughs> All those fish lead lonely, miserable lives. Wouldn't it be something if I cared? Too bad I don't. You're wondering when that shaggy carpet you ordered will arrive at your home. Let me assure you, madam, it's on its way. It was nice of Chewie to tell the shop owner that, and not his wife, but savor these holiday deals while you can. Besides shaving and hair trimming, it's guaranteed to lift stains off clothing, faces, and hands. Cleans teeth, fingers, and toenails, washes eyes, pierces ears, calculates, modulates, and syncopates light rhythms. Wow, a Roomba really can do anything. I wish this movie went the cheap route and just gave me a gift card. Meanwhile, in the stock footage... I want the Rebels located and identified, if it means searching every household in the system. So that's why George Lucas had Darth Vader wear a mask. It's so in the holiday special, they could dub him saying anything. I've been watching this so long that I feel like I now understand Wookiee. So one of the Wookiees, I guess, turns on a cooking show, where we see... Oh. My. God. Wonderful. Just adds that touch of piquancy. Wow, fat grandma jumped the shark when she thought blackface was a good idea. Never thought I'd look at Harvey Corman and think nice tits. Harvey Corman, no! Who the hell designed that thing? He looks like a mix between Cinderella's stepmother and that robot maid from the Jetsons! Even though Chewie may be late, the kitchen never stops. A bit of the calorantrum root. Wonderful, just adds that touch of piquancy. Really? Because I'm also smoking some of that too, and so far, not feeling anything. This feels like it was only made to keep Cat's attention. So it's stir, whip, stir, whip, 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 stir. Stir, whip, stir, whip, 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 stir. Let's try it again. Stir, whip, stir, whip. Whip, whip, stir, stir, whip, stir, whip, 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 stir, stir, whip, stir, whip, 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 stir, whip, stir, whip, stir, whip, 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 wh
Even Lloyd has just changed the channel. Don't worry, I also use my third arm to put a secret ingredient in the soup. Now let's go back to them Turkish Star no, Wars No, please, themselves. go back to the cooking! I don't want to see all this sci-fi action, I want to see how the fucking dinner turns out! Uh, say that again. This is one life they won't soon forget. No one will forget this. It only aired once and we still haven't forgotten it. Have you ever noticed they never actually acknowledge what Life Day is? I mean, my guess is it's a celebration of life, but what does that entail? What's the history of it? How long has it been around? It's not really much of a holiday special if you don't explain the goddamn holiday! Oh good, we're back to the Wookiees. That was about, what, 20 seconds of Harrison Ford you just saw there? You know, when you hire the cast of Star Wars, we expect to see the cast of Star Wars, not these walking dog anuses all day. Yeah, the dialogue is still riveting. A blockade has been set up around the planet. No ships will be permitted to land or take off until further no- Jail. Okay, how the fuck did that happen again? Are you Why if it isn't Art Carney? And yes, I double-checked, I know it's really him. Might as well have Carney show back up, it's already a sad circus. I guess he's helping the Rebels in their battle against the Empire, and Chewie's family are friends of the Resistance. Why all the long, hairy faces? I made it through the Imperial Patrol tonight. What you talking about, Carney? And now for the lovely lady of the house. That was a lady the whole time? Happy Life Day. You'll insert this proton pack. Proton packs? Now you're taking the Ghostbusters down with your ship? I said no fake subtitles. This little twerp has a bigger bedroom than I did. Little shit 1% Wookiees. Ah, he's got a Pong game. And it's broken. Grandpa, on the other hand, got something way better. I thought you might like this. One of those that... Uh... Oh, it's a real, it's kind of hard to explain, it's a, uh... Wow. World of Warcraft? It's a masturbation machine. It's quite easy to explain. This better not get weird. So I think Grandpa Wookie enters the Matrix or something as we see him enter some kind of machine where he watches... Wookie Sperm. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. Okay, now I'm starting to feel those drugs. <laughs> and this special still sucks. Well, now I know what midichlorians look like. This is gonna get a little creepy, uncle, isn't it? I exist for you. I am in your mind as you create me. Oh, yes. Oh. Oh, yes. I can feel my creation. <laughs> You can feel my erection. Oh, oh, we are excited, aren't we? Mm, yes, we are. Relax, just relax. Now, we can have a good time, can't we? Oh, uh, I don't know. My son and daughter are in the other room, but what the heck? Is this a traditional Life Day pastime? You see, I am your fantasy. I am, I am your experience. I am so your experience me. This is wrong. This is a holocaust of wrong. That's the beauty of the cinema snob. Even when it's a TV variety special for the family, it's still porn. I am your pleasure. This is our I me together. I know you like it shaved. And this is what Wookiees look like without all our fur. So, what's Grandpa's fetish? No, why can't we see Grandpa's hands? What the fuck, cocaine? This is our moment together in time. That we might turn this moment into an eternity. What is up with this special? 
First of all, would you ever look at this and say, Oh yeah, Star Wars, I can tell right away. Hell, would you even connect it to a holiday special? Second, are humans just the most attractive creatures in the universe? I mean, you got Jabba putting Leia in that slave outfit, and now you got a Wookiee jerking off to this chick. How many interspecies love nests are there? I always wondered what the inside of a disco ball looked like. Turns out it's just like a piñata, only if you break it, a lot of drugs come out. This is what they masturbated to in the 70s. In the 90s, we had to work our jerk-off time around when Shannon Tweed and Shannon Weary took their clothes off on Cinemax. Nowadays, it's just the internet. This Double boo. Oh good, because this special wasn't gay enough already. C-3PO and Leia look stressed. They should be. They're overdrawn at the memory bank. Let's interrupt them too. Mala, it's so good to see you. Happy life day. Could this feel any more like a Scientology holiday? Could you do me a favor and send either Chewbacca or Han Solo to the screen, please? She says that she would like to grant your request, but is quite unable to do so. You mean they haven't arrived yet? She says there has been no contact. You know, I never figured out how the stupid translations in this world work. How come the Wookiee can understand the English that Leia is speaking, but can't manage to speak it herself? Is it because their lips don't make O sounds? That Imperial Patrol must be giving them more trouble than we bargained for. Good thing I'm the leader of a club that's made for you and me. Mala, are, are you alone? Oh, well, Dad's here, but he's kind of busy with a sock and a bottle of lotion. Maybe Chewie and Han are doing something more interesting. I feel the same way about you two, pal, and your family. Great, so it doesn't matter if I watch Star Babe. I'm still gonna see Star Wars characters, fuck. You could really feel the heart in this special. Happy Life Day, pal. I don't think you're being genuine, Harrison Ford. Best thing about this is we all know it'll have a happy ending. Sounds like a start. What I tell you? Must be Chewbacca now. See? They all die. <laughs> okay, they don't all die. What I mean by that is they all die. <laughs> Can I please die? Just think, this may be one of the stormtroopers' first day on the job. They had no idea they'd be signing up for something stupid. The Imperials are looking for those goddamn rebels. We hear you've been hiding Jewish Evoks. The Third Reich holiday special sure is stupid. This unit is occupied by four Wookiees, two adult males, one adult female, and one male child. And also that goop of Wookiee sperm that Itchy left on the floor. I don't know what our Carney's still doing here. This scene sure does put the who in Wuhio. Now, Wookiee food isn't the greatest, but I'm sure that I can whip something up in the kitchen there that we can all eat. Uh, you don't mind, do you, Mala? Mala, will you come in the kitchen and help me? What? Mala, will you come in the kitchen and help me? Isn't that Hawaii's way of saying Merry Christmas to you? Ah, good. They found the booze. Now they can cry themselves to sleep. This scene was almost good. I just about got to see someone backhand a tiny Wookiee. Ah, so Art is the cameo provider. Who's next on the roster? Jefferson Starship it is. Surprised they're not seeing miracles. As in, it's a miracle this made it to air. Wow, they don't have holiday celebrating Jesus in galaxies far, far away, but they sure do have Jefferson Starship singing a love song into a dildo. Lovely, he's singing right into John Ritter's dick from Skin Deep. Say what you will about the Imperials, they got some damn solid taste in music. <laughs> It's like the special got bored of itself, and so it decided to change the channel to VH1 for you. 
it, look, half the audience is gonna be on drugs anyway. Might as well show the other half how the drug users are seeing this special. Somewhere Grace Slick is watching this and thanking God that she's one of the audience members on drugs. That's a big microphone, but not as big as Itchy's dick. <laughs> It was alright. Don't, don't <laughs> use that. If you point them all out, we're gonna be here all night. Glad you idiots took some time out for that. No wonder you end up losing. You can't even threaten Wookiees. Uh, 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 uh. We don't want to have to hurt anyone. That's not what we're here for. Lumpy is so scared, so he's playing a game of Simon? You sold out, Star Wars! Actually, for Lumpy, it's cartoon time, so he watches Beavis and Buttface. God, I would punch this special in the nads if I could! Nice that a Star Wars animated series exists within the Star Wars universe. It's not even a good cartoon either. It's like if Dragon's Lair melted. While searching for a talisman, Han Solo got stranded, so Dr. Robotnik sends out a rescue party to search for him. This is considered to be the high point of the special, or maybe we're just hypnotized by Luke's weird-ass eyes. This portion is known as the Faithful Wookiee, as opposed to those cheating bastard Wookiees. Actually, is it me, or is the animation done by the same numbnuts who did those horrible Zelda CD games? These are the faces of evil. The cartoon was provided by Nelvana LTD, the same company behind droids and Ewoks. Good on them! I always wanted the Rebels to visit Dinosaur Island. The cartoon also marks the first appearance of Boba Fett, so even the characters that you love can originate from something awful. But who cares? Everyone else looks like a McDonald's character, so it's not like his coolness factor is going to save anything. How far away? Settle down. <laughs> Whoa! Be nice to your pets, sir! To be fair, Boba does more in this cartoon than in the actual movies. They're under the impression Boba is helping them find the talisman, when in reality... I have made contact with the Rebels, and all is proceeding as you wish, Darth Vader. Ah, uh, what the fuck? I trusted him! But when you have a hacker bot, you can find out the truth within seconds. I see why they call you the best bounty hunter in the galaxy. Oh, no. And I see why you only speak an exposition dialogue. Thanks for explaining his backstory to me. And that was one, two, three lines we got out of James Earl Jones and nothing else. Real nice. You can't even keep the villain in the recording studio for four fucking minutes. I'm afraid, sir, it's because you said Boba is a friend and Wait a minute, when does C-3PO blink? Now what's the purpose? He says our friend- Ah! Why does Solo look like Richard Gere's crinkled up caricature? Boba escapes and someone needs to help Han Solo. He's melting. This is what Indy would have looked like if he didn't close his eyes in Raiders. Good thing Chewie knew all along not to trust Boba Fett. How did you know, Chewie? Mm -mm. May I quit directly, sir? He just didn't smell right. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't trust him because he farted? Oh, please, don't come back to the plot now. There must be something else you can watch or put on to waste our time. Hey, guys, while you're at it, why don't you put his Pong machine together? The hell? The universe itself merchandised Banthas? Actually, that wasn't originally there. Lucas digitally added it in for the special edition. Imperial fucking bastards! Go clean up your room. He can't clean his room? He's busy watching Wohio, Channel 7, The Lucky Network. Don't worry, kid. If a masturbation machine exists, I'm sure a needle and thread do, too. Even the characters in this special want to find out what else is on TV. This instruction cassette provided by the manufacturer. This product was packed under strict... An instruction video. They're actually showing us an instruction video. Are you fucking real? Lumpy is building a translation machine so he can fool the Imperials into returning to their base. <laughs> Oh, 
of the kids in the 70s loved them some Harvey Corman. The motor abilities. Was the Carol Burnett show just canceled at this time? Harvey Corman is in like five separate scenes and none of them funny! Don't do it, Harvey. Don't do it. It'll be over soon. But now let's get started, shall we? So if you thought this special couldn't possibly get any more boring, Harvey Corman, pretending to be a robot, I guess, demonstrates how to put together a transmitter. And yes, they show you every single solitary stop! Let me guess, this gets weird. Why is this the most sexual Star Wars movie? Thank you for selecting our brand of mini transmitter. If you assemble it properly, following the instructions I'm about to give you, it will provide many years of fun. First, find the sealed package containing all the tools you'll need. It looks like this. Why is this interesting? Try not to rip it open, because it makes a very handy storage case for your tools until you need them again. How is it entertaining? This is the first thing you'll need. Please be careful not to hurt yourself on the sharp edges. Ow. My god. I'm actually getting stupider while watching this. Find the circuit breaker module. Mm. There goes my college education. Let's start calling these components by their proper names. Mm. There goes whatever 5 times 5 equals. Every one of the 10,000 terminals on your circuit breaker module is marked in a particular color. There went my name. Don't, don't remember it anymore. These must be connected to the wires with the corresponding colors. There went the ability to control my bowels. <laughs> Fuck! I'm stupid now, I don't even care. We better turn our attention to the assembly of the impulse to voice translator. Is there a video telling you how to make a goddamn Christmas special? Because that's the one you goddamn need. He's absolutely essential. So finally, after that long drawn out horseshit is over, what do they cut to next? Seems like as good a time as any to watch some shitty reality show. Time now for Life on Tatooine. <laughs> Just stick to the fucking story! What, do you have ADD? Were there other scripts that just got mixed in with this one? Just stick to one fucking premise so we can get this over with! God! Ugh, even in the 70s, Mark Burnett set out to ruin television. So now we cut to Tatooine life, because the Wookiee life was just so fucking engaging that we needed another one to butt in! Here we are at the cantina where someone is being thrown out for breaking the must-have 21 testicles are over rule. I can't see how this is going to sway my opinion. I thought I taught you to drink faster than that. Well, at least you're steady. Oh, come on now, drink up. There's plenty more where that came from. What'll it be? Hello, Acme. Okay, we'll do it your way. Hello. Now we'll do it my way. What'll it be? Wow, those two guys sound really alike. Actually, that's B. Arthur as the bartender. Oh my god, I love you, B. Arthur! And the guy is, here's a shocker, Harvey Corman! Haven't seen him in the past five minutes of torture. Can my love for B. Arthur make me look past Harvey Corman being weird again? Now you stay just as long as you can. Mm, that it can. And she just poured that into his asshole. B. Arthur is a barmaid having just a regular old night. When I left here the other night, I felt something that I haven't felt in longer than I care to remember. Shame? If you're saying what I think you're saying you felt you meant I thought you needed to hear, then I just have one thing to say I did not. Now actually, to B. Arthur's credit, she seems to be like the only one who's actually trying in this whole damn thing. I mean, she just has the role of bartender, but I'm actually a million times more interested in what happens in this stupid bar than I am the rest of the universe. I know this point was also made in the Nostalgia Critic episode, but that doesn't make it any less true. Am I the only one who would totally watch a sitcom revolving around B. Arthur bartending at the Tatooine Cantina? Well, of course we can talk. We are talking. You're not ordering, I'm not pouring, we are not drinking, we are talking. Hell no, I wouldn't be! This is the best idea the special has had yet! Oh no, don't go back to this. I don't care about this. Go back to Archie's place, but with B. Arthur. The Empire has closed us down! 
Unfortunately, the Empire has imposed a strict curfew on Tatooine, and in this version, Greedo wants his tab first. None of them want to leave because this is the Star Wars Holiday Special, and goddammit, they want a drink. Well, that's weird. This whole intergalactic empire is concerned with just closing down this bar? I mean, don't they have more important things to do? You have done well, Lord Vader. And now I sense we must focus all of our forces to crush this tiny cantina on Tatooine. What of the reports of the rebel fleet massing near Summers? It is of no concern. Soon the cantina will be crushed and B. Arthur will be one of us. Why do we need B. Arthur? Silence! B. Arthur gives them all one more round, because if there's one being more powerful than the Emperor, it's B. Arthur. And she sings, too. Just one more round, friend. Then a homeward bound, friend. Don't forget me in your dreams. Ladies and gentlemen, the perfect woman. Even the rat from Food of the Gods shows up. I'm not joking, that's literally the rat from Food of the Gods. If every bar had B. Arthur doing a song and dance number before closing times, I would never stop going to bars. Hey, wait a minute, isn't that Guido? Huh, I guess he did shoot first. Try stopping by, friend, if there's a light in the place. Actually, and I hate to say this, but this song sequence actually isn't that bad. Maybe it's because everything else is so horrible by comparison, but I actually feel really sad that her bar is closed. She's the only character I kind of like in all this, and maybe the idea of a closing bar that can supply me alcohol during all of this makes me kind of emotional. You know I'm here, friend. Is that a tear, friend? In your eye. In fact, you know what? This whole special should have been about her. Nice, yes, nice. this special would have been better if it was focused on B. Arthur as a singing bartender in a cantina on Tatooine. That's how low we've gotten, people. That's how low we've gotten. Good night, but not. I'm sorry, B. I like your place. It's a nice looking place. And thus, this small section makes it okay that the Star Wars Holiday Special exists. Unfortunately, this bittersweet, lovely section ends, and if it seems depressing in here, it's because we have to get back to the main plot. Aww. God damn it, the fucking Wookiees! I hope we get stuck in a drain pipe! The Imperials' best return, Yar is getting his revenge. But when they find out it's Lumpy giving them the order to return to base... Return to base. Return to base. Alright, that's why I wasn't a writer on the holiday special. When it does return, we get to see every father five minutes after giving their kid a Furby. <laughs> <laughs> Bad stuff happening to kids. But both Chewbacca and Han Solo finally come in to try and save the day. <laughs> wow, that's like the most accident-prone stormtrooper I've ever seen. I mean, tripping over your own gun? How do you think he'd do in a real battle? Oh, hey, look, Rebels! How are you? Oh. <laughs> Love to, but I can't. I gotta get back to the Falcon before. No, oh, you can really feel the love in this room. Well, I'd love to, but I can't. I gotta get back to the Falcon before somebody stumbles across it. Yeah, they're paying me by the minute, so I can't be here for long. You're like family to me. A very distant, rarely seen family. Considering how Mala is played by actor Mickey Morton, it was good of this movie to showcase Kashyyyk's very first gay marriage. Also, Art Carney comes back. Anyway, on with Life Day. 
Here they are bringing together the sacred Shankara stones. So I guess the Wookiees hold up some sort of sparkling snow glows as they're suddenly teleported through a bright, heavenly light. Is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? I have a feeling Life Day originated as a dumb fraternity. Soon they'll be tarred and feathered and fuck a sheep. And then Life Day ends where Logan's run begins. Gotta be booze. We're then seen inside a room with, oh Jesus, more screeching Wookiees. <laughs> Till this turns into a real suicide cult, and they break out the cherry Wookiee aid. Why are they even wearing those silly robes? Is it a Wookiee chorus? Are they gonna sing Christmas carols? No, no, don't do it, don't do it! <laughs> Thus, atheism was born. It is indeed true that at times like this, Arto and I wish that we were more than just mechanical beings. And we're really alive. Unfortunately, we're godless creations with no soul. Because as machines, this seems quite unbearable to us. I'm really glad we got that heartwarming goodbye with Han Solo, only for him to randomly turn up at the actual ceremony. Is anyone buying this shit? So all the cast shows up as Princess Leia does her best British impression for the entire crowd. This holiday is yours, but we all share with you the hope that this day brings us closer to freedom and to harmony and to peace. No matter how different we appear, we're all the same in our struggle against the powers of evil and darkness. Did I mention she started doing drugs during this special? I hope that this day will always be a day of joy in which we can reconfirm our dedication and our courage, and more than anything else, our love for one another. This is the promise of the Tree of Life. What does any of that mean? This is one step away from linking Life Day to the baby Wookiee Jesus swaddling clothes. Quick, distract us with a song. We say Oh God, no! Not a cheesy Life Day song, please! A day of hope. No more! No more! I can't take it! This is the worst! This is the worst Christmas special ever! <laughs> she has no idea where she is. Stop it! Stop it, please! Oh, look at those faces. <laughs> yep, the rebellion has failed. Help me! Somebody help me! Santa Christ, Santa Christ, we all love Santa Christ. He is Santa and Jesus, goddamn it's Santa Christ. He atoned for our sins, but he also likes pancakes. He saved puppies from a fire, and he also likes pancakes. He played bass for Aerosmith, reads the sick orphans too. He goes surfing in space and makes really good fondue. He shoots lasers from his eyes and your curtains for free. 
He'll fight monsters for fun and hang out with Mr. T. Santa Claus, Santa Claus, Santa Claus, Santa Claus, you are the best and we love you, Santa Claus. <laughs>